<laughs> Welcome, guys. Episode 13 of the weekly. And with the finger snap, all of you have appeared. That was kind of like Infinity War. Get it? Never mind. Anyway, oh, with, <laughs> with oh, me, well, it's sort of the opposite of Infinity War. Right? Hey, hey, I, I'm not trying to kill all of you, okay? I said, no, that's what know. I mean. I, like, it, you know, I'm happy that it's not actually like Infinity War. Is yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. So, um, with me, of course, is my usual co host, Mr. Juan Bagnell, who thinks he understands comic books well, but he doesn't. Oh, How wow. you doing, bro? <laughs> wow, that was loaded. <laughs> Uh, oh, I feel like you need to sit down for another one of my why the Flash is the most influential comic book characters in history diatribes, but we'll oh. save that for another. Oh podcast. no, no, but he is though. I agree with that one. Are you, okay, let's 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 stop this craziness now. I <laughs> know <laughs> Sam running in to mediate. That's good. <laughs> and there, of course, is Sam, aka Black Iron underscore Man, without a robo voice today. Woo woo. Yeah, oh, that's so nice. It's hey, so nice. Hurry up and say as much as you can before it goes away. Thank you, Google. 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 <laughs> and finally, the one and only Mr. Warren Bowman coming from the high flying wheels of BW1.com. High flying wheels. Dude, just go with it, okay? That just needs some mind. <laughs> Why are there wheels flying? <laughs> yeah. There's so much wrong scientifically with everything oh. you just said. Wow. Oh. Did you? I'm trying to give you, somebody an intro. Don't, don't you have a bachelor's in science? <laughs> I will stone you from here. <laughs> this is, this is, this is, the, the whole theme of this week's show is just throwing shade, guys. I know. Damn. <laughs> Watch everyone throw shade at E. Did the, did, 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 did the NBA get in the way? Is that the problem? <laughs> Well, let's kick it off with a couple of news items and one that I consider partially uselessness. But Google is trying to fix its messenger services yet again. And this time they said no new app. We are going to improve the messenger text text and app with RCS so you can do all this rich uh, messaging services. It will be similar to how you use Facebook. They did mention Facebook and iMessenger in their video. Uh, but they forgot to, they also mentioned that it is not encrypted like the others. So thoughts, guys, as, uh, you know, as, as at least Google decides to use one of its current messaging platforms and not create a seventh one or an eighth. Oh, who knows how many at this point? I'm actually writing an article about this whole thing because it's kind of ridiculous because it's Google is essentially what Google's messaging is what Windows Phone is to mobile OSs. Whole lot of potential. Keeps restarting, keeps retrying, and eventually they just sat there and failed and compromised with the competition. And that's what they're doing essentially with this chat RCS feature, which basically relies on carriers, which is always a fail when you got to rely on other carriers to turn things on um, and, and, and make these, these features work to make texting better, which I get. But the reality is, is that the only thing that this making is this, that's making this better for is businesses to send different communications down the line. If they want to send a ticket or some type of special text that requires data or something more advanced with it and has and have a better presentation, they'll be able to do that over an RCS service better, probably pay a lot less than they would have and then use something like uh, Facebook spots or, or um, what's the other one, iMessages bots and all other stuff like that. And the interesting thing is, is that they, like, the only people that are calling this an actual problem, because it's been called a messaging mess, the only people that have the problem with this are the iPhone people, because they complain that they get green bubbles in their little text messaging boxes, because they're the only ones that that whine about that whole thing. Everybody else that's on the Android platform, essentially, if they either use text or they use something else like you know Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp or something like that, and they've been perfectly fine going around and doing that. The only people that have been hoarding on a hoard, sort of complaining about an Android about having a universal messaging service has been people like us complaining about that, which they had and which was Hangouts, and they decided to just deviate completely away from that. So it's their own fault, essentially, for going away from where everybody was. Their entire base was over in Hangouts and said, this is what we want to use. They decided, no, 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 we got to make some different app. We got to do all this other different stuff. And people just said, no, we want to use this. They made, what, 10 different messaging applications and messaging apps and messenger apps and all this other stuff and just gunked it up so much that now no one uses anything else. They completely abandoned Hangouts, decided to make that some type of uh, 
Slack competitor, which is dumb in its own space for them even trying to do that. And now we're here, them basically saying, well, we failed, but we'll try to get all the carriers on board to, to, to start RCS, which you already started before. This, is, this, this isn't new. They, they, they started this with Sprint. So they, they, this whole them trying to push They've RCS been thing. RCS for at least the last five years. And it's, say, and, and, and it's still dead in the water because nobody wants to use it. No, none of the carriers want to turn it on. It's it's it, the only way they're going to be able to even get it on there is because they agreed Samsung Samsung agreed to put it in their messaging app, and then they're going to put an Android messaging app, which is the basic messaging app in stock Android, which is mostly everyone uses. So they're they're sort of shoehorning this force in, and the carriers are lightly sort of agreeing and said, okay, we can do that. Most likely because it's a way for them to sell to businesses to push rich messages out whatever they want to sell, uh, uh, whatever service they want to use with it. So to me, like, I, I know I'm going all around the world with this, but to me, it's just like one of those complaints that's an issue that's a non-issue, but in the end of the day, Google just looks stupid and it's their own fault. And no one's going to care about this. This will get turned on and no one will care about it. Okay. Um, anybody else? Uh, Sam? No, I, I think yeah. Warren did an amazing job of summing up how we're all feeling. I think the... Uh, this situation has this one pro and con to it where I'm happy that they're just improving a product and I'm happy that they're not launching a new product. But at the same time, they're doing an amazing job of training smartphone users to not trust them. So from the early days of Hangouts, when I worked to try and get my family to use a unified messaging platform for video calling and for instant message and text message style conversation, Google devalued what I invested my time and effort in to try and get them to use. So yes, now yes. at least we're not having to play that game. Like, cause we, I, I think we're all three of us, all of us, we, we, we bounced on, on Allo and Duo. Like, I, I don't know. Did you guys put any effort into trying to get people to use? I sent two messages and both of them were to E. This is useless. This is stupid. And that was the end of it. <laughs> Literally. That was, that's the only I conversation said, we had on that. I sent two messages between two accounts of my own. That was all <laughs> that to test, to test Allo. And I did one one video call again between two accounts. I, 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 I use it for video calls, uh, called my mom and called Duo, my yeah. cousin with Duo. It was quite effective. And then uh, and then they improved video calls on WhatsApp. And then that was just the end. Yeah. Well, they, they, had, this, they had this with Hangouts. They had this mm -hmm. exact thing there. And they could have just built on top of that, the name was already out there because it was an upgrade of Google Talk. It was an upgraded version of what Google yeah. Talk was. Everyone was already yeah. using it. Everybody was already using it in their Gmail. They were perfectly comfortable with communicating through there. So it was already a desktop client available within their own product as Gmail. And then they also, and, and people also had it already automatically built into their phones. iOS users had to download whatever the case may be, but it was already there. And then they decided, Oh well, we're just gonna go and try to make our own iMessage. You know, who, the funny thing is, here's the funny thing about iMessage because it's gonna fail too. What was the company that did the same thing before them and failed miserably with it when they tried to implement another other platform because they waited too long? BBM. Ding. BBM was the first version of this. Yeah, and, but the, the difference is that iMessage won't fail because they will just keep it on the platform. Right? Well, that's, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the, the reason thing. they're going to fail because you, it's users on will just move. platform. You, yeah. Users yeah. eventually will eventually either a WhatsApp or Facebook or Telegram or whoever is going to be the next niche where everybody gets in group messages. You can be that iPhone person that says you want to stick an iMessage, but eventually your friends might want to move over to something else. And if the group chat's over there, they're just gonna go over there. And especially when it's ubiquitous and not tied to a single phone or a phone number. I mean, I mean, so, I, I do, I do hear that. I just think it's, it's just hard. iPhone uses it terribly. Uh, I, I, I think. <laughs> no, I mean, I think it's hard because half of them, half of them probably don't, half of them wouldn't even know they're using iMessage unless they were different couple of bubbles in a stupid text messaging app. Yeah, they, wouldn't they, know. they wouldn't know, but they do. I'm just saying that it's just... But they're the only ones complaining. The rest of us Android users, no, they're not complaining. <laughs> yeah, but I think this, that, that's, that's the problem with uh, with Google's approach and Apple's approach. I think at the end of the day that it's, it's inevitable that these companies will end up failing because people want apps that function across devices. So that's why a lot of people use uh, WhatsApp because WhatsApp, doesn't matter if you're Android, doesn't matter if you're um, iOS, it's going to work and, and you're going to be able to talk to yeah, who you want to talk to. Too. Yeah, so it's 
it's, it's just it's just the way it needs to be. It doesn't. You know, it needs to be freed from just a singular OS, and that's no, the no, problem. I, I do agree. Let, let's move away from this rubbish. Let's go to the next question. Yeah, Tom. <laughs> Unless you want to add anything, uh, Juan. Oh no, I mean, I, I think we're all on the same mind here. It, it, it's it, it's one step forward. I, I want to give Google credit. That is one step forward. Look, you're improving a product instead of just abandoning it. Kudos, Google. Um, but it's like five steps back in terms of the overall. Consumer. Well, it'll get abandoned again when whatever <laughs> messaging platform you know, that I, uses data, everyone decides. I don't think so. I still do think, like to your point, Warren. This is what sucks: is that we've got the hope of potential. This is what always burns us. You know, like you know, from the Microsoft days. Now Google is starting to fall into the same traps that Microsoft did. There's a ton of potential, and we can see an endpoint where they tie together services in a way that would be really compelling for consumers. It's just lately I've had zero faith that they can actually get to that point of executing and, and actually delivering for consumers in a way that would be a meaningful improvement over what we've used in the past. But when we look at Wi-Fi calling coming to Google Voice, we look at upgrades to Project Fi, and we look at rich messaging coming to just their stock messages app. Tying those pieces together with a good video calling element, too, could be really exciting. I just doubt Google has the leadership and the focus to get us there. Let me help you with leadership and focus. Very simple. For Android P launch, scrap this nonsense, remake Hangouts, tell people to just download the brand new spanking app that does everything from here to why, Timbuktu. Why can't they make a new app and just have everybody import no, themselves no, no, into no, the no, new no, 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 just... No. just no, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> if they need to rebuild Hangouts, let's say they want to all, add all that crap and everything else they need to add to it and you couldn't do it to the base Hangouts app. Why don't you make a new Hangouts app and tell people yeah, to that's what I said. I said you, it. Call it Hangouts. Yeah, call yeah it no, hangouts. yeah. You call it Hangouts. <laughs> what I was just saying. And then we're saying. Download it when Andrew T comes out. Done. That's it. Case closed and you just move. No, I think you're over. all wrong. And what they need to do is make a new app and just call it Hangout. You know what? Sheesh. <laughs> 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 all right. So moving to some, some sad news. Uh, Qualcomm is laying off 100 and, sorry, 1,500 employees. This is part of their um, a billion dollar um, shave off that they had mentioned earlier in the year. Uh, it's always sad that this happens. In this case, Qualcomm doesn't need to. They never needed to, in my mindset, because the, the company would just, it was just, I guess, at that time was just to, to fend off um, Broadcom. But once you tell investors that you're cutting costs, you got to go through with it. So just, you know, mm -hmm. any, any thoughts, any, any anything you want to mention? Um, Did it say what locations they were doing? Uh, 1,250 are from San Diego HQ, and Ooh, then brutal. that's that's really uh, sad. And then, uh, if I'm not mistaken, let me see where the other ones are. I think 250 coming from somewhere else. Um, oh, I can't remember the other location, uh, but yeah, it's 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 a lot, and it's mostly just from the California workforce. So. Basically, anyone who works in that area is might go through some uh, some downsizing. So that's unfortunate. That really is unfortunate. Yeah, uh, especially when it, to me, I like I said, financially, they don't even need to do this at all. But that, that that's what I think is going to be another troubling aspect of of uh, just sort of in general corporate conversations over the next several years. Mm -hmm. We we have to have. As the coming job apocalypse, you know, and automation and AI and self-automated vehicles and everything is going to start impacting numerous job sectors in ways that I don't even think the smartest of us can properly predict or anticipate. Yeah, um, we're going to have to have a different conversation on things like the dignity of human labor. I mean, mm -hmm. look at what Tesla went through. Elon Musk saying, you know, hey, we we may be pushed a little too far. But you know that every other auto industry was looking at what Tesla was doing and seeing how they could also improve by reducing the amount of skilled human labor in their in their chain, um, trying to push for more automation in those sectors, too. Uh, when when we start seeing moves like this, where a corporation is beholden to their shareholders in a way which isn't even financially necessary we're going to have to have some really tough conversations in our society about what what value do we place on this labor 
how do we safeguard changes from businesses like this um and and then how do we like move forward in in an environment where a select few in our society have created amazing technology to render a significant portion of our job market almost obsolete you know what 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 do we do to properly invest in re-education what do we prop do to properly reinvest in infrastructure what do we do to uh, provide some kind of assistance for what I feel like will will protect the future of a capitalist society. Universal base so, income, right? Or actually, or actually invest in these things. Actually, investing in them, and especially in terms and of make education. them cheaper. Totally, I, 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 I feel like especially as we're we're putting this significant pressure on secondary education where I don't feel colleges are actually doing a good job of preparing. I, I don't think my college did a good job of preparing me for life as an adult and having to pay bills and, you know, pay rent. And oh, life just prepared. Yeah, me. But, but, no, but, but, but <laughs> that's the thing. See, so, so, so this is where, this is where the conservative in me comes out because I don't think it's the place of your college to teach you how to be an adult. I think it's the place of your college to give you tools that make you a successful professional. Not well, to teach you how to be an adult. I don't think that those two are as exclusive. I think they're they very, they're not very exclusive, but they're two very different things. You know, uh, being, a successful, being, being a successful professional does not mean you're the most responsible, most adult person in the world. But the problem is, okay, then tell, then tell colleges, colleges not to recruit 18, 17, 18 year olds into their schools. Okay, then, 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 what, then. What does that have to do with basically how teaching to, them how to pay their bills? Okay, okay, okay. This because is not your family not, training class, guys. But because, Sam, if, if you are not <laughs> capable of managing your own personal resources, then you can't be successful in whatever job you endeavor to do. You could be the most brilliant scientist on the planet, but if you're constantly having to do audits with the IRS and you're constantly missing rent payments because you can't manage your finances and you don't have a good handle on the business side of being a brilliant scientist, then you can't get your work done. Well, college, your colleges work. can teach you how to be a good businessman. They can, they can give you that, but they can't teach you how to be an adult. Regardless of how successful of a businessman you are, if you're an irresponsible adult, you're still an irresponsible adult. It is not your college's yeah, but, but responsibility you to make you a responsible I'm adult. Not saying, I'm not saying it's, colleges it's, it's should, that. should helicopter parent you. It's that when I, when I studied theater and dance in college, I had one course, one. Dude, you studied the theater and dance in college? On being, on we being need to hang out, man. A, a professional <laughs> working actor. So yeah, that. over over four years of college, I had three credits that even tried to scratch the surface on how to audition for projects, how to get your headshots done. Are you considering voiceover? There's a thing called a demo. What does an agent do? What does a manager do? Yeah. How do you how do you manage your finances between should you incorporate? So so you tell me why do we have so many starving artists out there it's because we're actually enforcing a, a methodology and uh an i an ideology that you should suffer for your art but i like having a roof over my head and i like eating food so i never really got to pursue professionally performing because i also discovered hey man if i'm a producer or a director i have way better opportunities at making money and that's what I had to make that choice. And I had to make that transition coming over. We are actively preparing young people to fail when we do not give them the tools to actually handle real life in the job market as a professional. Well, I think the college experience is that introduction into basically teaching these young people. I no, no, no. It, I, well, 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 I think it is. I, I think being being able to manage a college schedule, live away from home, be able to manage paying your rent while you're living off campus. I think those are the kind of things that you learn as part of being an adult, as part of growing up. Your college does not, I, I, I can't say this enough, especially in this day and age where we have safe spaces in schools, especially yeah. in colleges. Let you rant. I can't, I, can't, I can't say this enough, that your college is not 
responsible for teaching you how to be a grown up. That is what life does. And okay. if you're not the responsible, okay, okay. Wait, okay. Warren, okay. Before, before you kick in, before okay. You kick in, no, no, me... I, I would want to say one thing. Then tell them not to charge me out of the ass for it. That's and that. That I can a hundred percent agree. So right, with. But right the now, if we're charging into college, needs to be cheaper. But if they're charging that right now. You better be teaching these kids how to be adults. <laughs> That's what they're charging right no, no, now. I mean, I, I do agree. I think I think one thing we should bear in mind is, um, you know, we all had different colleges, college experiences, and we all learned different things. And life brings out different aspects of what you learn. And one of the biggest things that colleges fail to do, and this is to Juan's point, is that they don't teach students the business aspect of their desired profession. That is what you forget. Know. Forget the forget the aspect of being a, an adult. No, forget that. The business aspect of being a scientist. Okay, I, prime example. Sam, you know my uncle. My uncle mm -hmm. is a scientist. My uncle has six degrees. The sixth one was an MBA. Why? Mm -hmm. Because you know I I basically signed in my MBA at the same time he did, and he said. I came to the table in my pharmaceutical company and they didn't listen to me because I am a scientist. And they said, what do you know? Mm -hmm. So he went and got an MBA. And just, I mean, in, for him, it was not the fact that he didn't know what to do, but also just to reaffirm that. But if you were adding business courses laid into it, like, you know, like you said, like Juan, where he's do doing theater and dance, he's talking about, okay, how do you create a business from that? How do you actually, you know, manage your resources? I think those are the kind of things that make sense. For I think one of the things we're conflating is, I think you're talking about like the most basic elements of like, don't forget to brush your teeth twice a no, day. You, no, I'm talking about exactly what you mentioned with paying your rent and basically being a, those are just things no, of being no, no, a, no, and paying your no, bills. No, no, no. Those not, are responsible I'm not, adults. I'm not, I'm not saying about paying your rent. I'm saying, oh, okay. do, do you know the tax implications of being a, a working actor? What What's the difference between being a working actor as an incorporated entity and being a working actor as just an individual? What are your liabilities? I don't know. Yeah, but that's, that's something no, you should. That's, that's what that's we're an talking about. Thing for an actor to know. That's yeah, but it's also about. it's also an important thing for someone who works in any profession to know. It's also an important thing for someone to know. Why? Hey, guess what? Why? I'm not a tax professional. Maybe I should seek, seek the help of a tax professional during tax season. That's what reasonable people do. Mm -hmm. Your college doesn't need to tell you to go seek the help of a tax professional for tax season. Why would a college have to teach you that? No, 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 Sam, Sam, no, no. Sam, 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 Okay, think about it this way. Think of it this way. If, if you're taking a I, course, if dude, you're I taking get a course, what you're saying. You want the college to basically tell them, oh, as part of your profession, no, you're going to be faced no, with, no, 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 no. with the option of doing this as a tax person. What I'm saying, you're reducing what I'm saying to okay. its lowest common denominator. Okay, no, let me reduce it to its lowest common denominator in any way. It's very simple. It's very simple. If you offer classes to say, here are business options for what you do, you don't have to teach the whole thing. You have to present. Because if I knew in college, I may not remember, but if I knew, okay, hey, I could have, oh, I can incorporate and do this. I don't know the details. I don't have to know the details, but I need to know it's available. Then I can go to that tax professional and say, so I was in college and I, okay, I, I know there was right, this. So, 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 what should I, I'm just saying, when you give the option, not if I, it's not a matter of, because that's what you have tax professionals for. The reason yeah. I knew, no, no, the reason I knew certain things in business was because I actually took business courses. I went out of my way to do that. Yep. But no, not because, but I'm just saying that when you incorporate it into the curriculum and say, look, if you're thinking about making a business or doing this in acting, take these courses, even tell the students that, not even a matter of, because people just don't know. I mean, these there's are no the spoon fooding. I'm just saying. Be, these should be the electives. Tell like, them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they need these, to be big time. Exactly. Dude, I went to be college. Required. I went to college. Dude, 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 I went to college. They didn't, uh, UMass Amherst. They told me nothing. I could be a hungry scientist. Well, well, well I'm sorry. I'm, 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 maybe, you, okay, you we all have very, very different Different degrees. degrees. Yeah. But, but, yeah. but, but, but I'll, I'll put it this way. No one told me that because I went to get a job as a computer systems engineer, that I shouldn't take courses in economics, that I shouldn't have a minor in mathematics, that I shouldn't take programming courses. I basically looked at my path and said, okay, I have a guidance counselor. We had this conversation and I went, okay, I'm gonna take 21 credits for three years straight and I'm gonna split them between three different and disparate courses or coursework so that I could get to where I needed to be. 
it's part of being an adult. You yeah, basically it's learn also part, when no, you're trying to go. Part, you it's also part of your five-year plan. Because the thing people is, teach you to have a five-year, a ten-year, and a fifteen-year plan. You have to be able to basically plan out your life. Dude, That's part of dude, growing up. Dude, you're talking, aren't going to teach you that. I'm not talking They're about not that. You, and they should. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just said that you were with the counselor to go and learn about all that stuff. I went. I personally went to my counselor to talk about that and talk about how I could take twenty-one credits because I was capped. How no, is that any but you're different than but you're having counseling. a resource in a college which helps you learn about those, those So, ideas. once again, Juan, once again, Juan, I preempted that discussion, okay? The no college came to me and said, oh, you're going to want to be someone who works in finance and specializes in computer science, so maybe, you know, you should do all this. No, I went and I said, this is what I want to do. Let's try to and, sit and down what, and figure out the problem. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You have to do that yourself. Yeah, but you that college is needed but, to do but that. I'll everybody. actually give Sam a bit of an out with that because that's something that his parents taught him to do and that's something that most of the time parents don't tell kids to do early on it's a no resources. but no but they don't but they don't tell them to figure out what they want to do yeah they I don't mean, that, tell that them and like, and like like uh, I, my parents were telling me that at the age of seven what do you want to do what do you want to be so you start to think and process through those. Oh, things. Jonathan Jones goes, not going to lie. This is one of the best conversations you guys have had. <laughs> oh, God. We're totally out of the beaten path right now. With everything. But I, I really, I think that's a problem where we, where, where I think, parents need to ask kids early on as young as they are what do you want to be when you grow up and get them in that direction because they'll start discovering it themselves so asking the questions themselves so when they get to these later stages they'll automatically kind of do this because they've already tried things before see what they like see what they didn't like saw the next thing they wanted to do and they already know how to decisively do that the problem is we tell kids well you can just wait to college to figure out well you actually don't have to fit you actually don't have to commit to anything until your junior year in college when we right. tell them those things mm -hmm. they'll that, that, that's where we we, we fall and into college. College. Sam, what, do your, what do your parents do? My parents, my dad is a pastor, and my mom's a pastor as well. However, my dad has a PhD and he also has an MBA. So does my mom has a PhD okay. and an so, MBA. So Actually, my mom has two PhDs and an MBA. So my dad has a PhD in electrical engineering, and my mom has a master's in computer science. So what performance education could I have received from my parents? performance education that you could have received from your parents and I'm, I'm just simply saying basically it's 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 i'm not i'm not saying that you should have received some kind of performance education from your parents i'm saying simply if you know what your outlook was like if you have a career path in mind it is not it is your responsibility not your college's responsibility Right. to basically seek like out courses that basically facilitate you in getting to that path so that's now, what we're paying them to do that's what that's we're paying what, them to that's do. That's what we're paying them to do. The resources, like you took advantage of. So, when you take your coursework, yeah, go ahead. My, my one point isn't that there should be someone in a college who puts a diaper on you and sits you down and that's tells you exactly what you need to do. What, what I'm saying is, I didn't have any of those resources that you talked about, like going to a counselor to, to properly educate yourself on those business ramifications. That did not properly exist in the career track that I was in to study theater production and performance. I had three credits of the most surface examination of what a life as a working actor would be like. And I'm pretty confident that around the nation, when we're looking at the state of post-secondary education, that more students are finding themselves falling through the cracks because of lack of resources and because of a lack of a discussion, not because those students aren't somehow not bootstrapping hard enough or being proactive enough. You go to a counselor, you sought that information out. Now I'm saying is we need to make sure that those resources are more evenly distributed so that people have access to them like you did. And I, I would point to like, say you look at like the, the esports program at UC Irvine. That is an amazing example of how to do this right. Every aspect of the video game industry is open for someone to pursue from the physical education department all the way to the legal department and the people who want to play games for a living. That is an amazing resource for every, anyone to take advantage of <clears throat> and have a more well-rounded education as to what that lifestyle is actually going to resemble. Now, outside of an MBA, what, what other opportunities do you have on some of these other, these other fields? 
know, scientists aren't actually getting that business education. And it shows in the conversation that we have about science and industry and how scientists voices mm -hmm. are devalued at that table because they're not talking about money. Capitalism can't be the only driver in all of these discussions, though we live in a capitalist society. Okay, here, here's a quick one. Here's something that Mom Stanley said this week that said um, about some drug that was curing diseases and said, is it financially profitable to do that? Think about it. Because these guys are not signed again, this is a finite guy saying well, something. That, I'm just saying, I think, I think that's a that's a different discussion and no, basically is, putting a value on people's but, lives. But, but it's, it, it, it stems from the same place. Yeah, it does. It comes from the same place and saying that that's the mindset. And because there is no there's no guy who has a science background going, no, I mean, yeah, you can make it profitable. You just have to find ways to do it. Yep. And the finance guy is just going, look, numbers are not crunching. You guys are spending too much money developing this drug. It's too expensive. That's the same answer my uncle got. By yeah, the way, I, 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 drug. So I'm just saying that that's the kind of thing that I mean. I get it when you go to the guidance council. And you, so I went to the guidance council at UMass Amherst. I said, look, I wanted to be a doctor, but also again, I also wanted to do business. I'm in Nigeria. That's how we are. <laughs> and you know the, you know what they told me? That she said, why would you want to do that? She didn't give me options. Yeah, but but okay, that's, so that's so, so let so, 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 so let me let, let, let me break this down so people understand that I'm not just coming out of a place where I'm just saying, oh, this is you should just be awesome. No, I, I went to high school in Milton High. I was told by my high school, um, my high school guidance counselor that I couldn't get into three of my top schools, BC, Northeastern, and uh, and Harvard because guess what? Uh, well, you might not be smart enough. I got into BC and Northeastern, didn't pass and get into I didn't get into Harvard. But hey, that's life. Went to Northeastern. My Northeastern um, guidance counselor wanted to basically push me towards the track of doing something totally different than the engineering I wanted to do. I went to UMass. The UMass guidance counselor pushed me to doing something different than I wanted to do. I had to go to three different guidance counselors in UMass Amherst until I found a minority, a black gentleman, who sat me down and said, the only way we're going to do this is if you're serious and I'm serious. This was after a semester that I got a 2.8 GPA. So please, don't assume that I'm just saying this is easy. You just go in there and it works out. You have to be tenacious. You have to know where you, where you need to go. You have to know what your track is. And you have to be the one that basically pushes it. A college will give you the education to get somewhere, to be a professional, to be an adult, to be someone who, who, and who can see that end state in your life. You need to be the one driving that as an individual. I'm not saying, hey, colleges shouldn't offer as many diverse diverse course, courses as possible. I'm saying that people need to be the one to plan out their lives. Colleges can't now, do that. For Sam, me. your personal experiences, doesn't that sound a lot like what I was advocating for? Why should you have had to have gone to so many different people if mm -hmm. secondary education is exactly what you're claiming it is? And people I'm not are... claiming secondary education is one thing or the other. I'm just saying it's not your college's responsibility to make you an adult. Yeah, no, but but see, but here's the thing: responsibility to prepare you, and you had to go out it, of your way. So what were you definitely? Doing? If, yeah. you, if if I'm if I'm signing up for a math class, it's their responsibility to make sure to give me a good damn oh damn good math math Sam, education. Sam, right? Sam, 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 it's not very, Sam, you mentioned one very important thing that you are skipping on. You said very, very simple thing. You have to go to three. All yeah. you want is one guidance what, counselor to tell What you need is one guidance counselor, definitely, yes. But the thing is this. That is really colleges, it. Colleges will give you the resource of a guidance counselor, right? And it's up to you to say, I'm not going to take what this guidance counselor says is <laughs> and go somewhere else. Otherwise, if I just basically say, hey, my college gave me a guidance counselor that says, hey, you can't do what you want to do, then, hey, I'm just going to listen to that person. And that's I'll, it. I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just say, I'll wrap it up and say this. I'll just wrap it up and say with this. Sam mm. likes to pay for things and then work to make those things he paid for work for him. I pay for and I don't like having to pay for one thing and then fight for four other things to get what I actually. No, I mean, look, see, no, I, no, 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 guys, guys, I get it. Everyone wants everything to work perfectly, and that, and I get, and I agree with you. Yeah, in, in that sense, I do agree with you. But I also think it's not just saying you pay for something. We all have very scarce resources. I went to UMass Amherst. It is a state school. You but don't yeah, get the choice. Hey, 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 no, 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 let me finish, let me finish, let me finish, let me, let me, let me, let me finish, right? My resources were limited, but even though my resources were limited, I understand that the only thing that's going to get me to a place 
where I can actually sit in the boardroom and talk to other people and basically feel as though I didn't lose out on it. It's my own personal drive. That is something that you learn through life. You don't need a, a college would never or be able your to parents. Teach you or your parents, yes. That, but a college, a college would never be able to teach you that. A college would never be able to tell you, basically, when the tax laws change, that you should pay attention to that. A college is never going to be able to te teach you so many things I've had to learn through professional experience and true life. They're just not going to be able to tell you. And asking a college to do this is basically disingenuous to the person who's relying it, on up-to-date information. Sam, it's, Sam, it's just not going to happen. And that's where you missed the point, because I'm not asking for that. I'm asking for the college to give you that one guidance professional, not go to find four or five. I don't want to look. That's a waste of time in college. You know, it's that. a waste, definitely. It yeah, is exactly. So, so when you're paying, I'm, I, I paid out of school tuition. By the way, you I mean, international fees in you. Oh yeah, it was expensive. For you me to look, do that, you might as well went to a private school. Private with that school. Price. To me to do that, and then go through the rubbish time of talking to dumb guidance counselors. And going, I, I think I can undo this myself. That is a waste of resource and time. My so I'm, I, I'm, not, I don't even, I'm, I'm not talking about that. Shit. I want the schools to do what they are paid for correctly. Oh, you yeah. know, guide them and say, look, if you're going to look, if you're going to study biology, here are the things you can actually. Nobody even told me that because I thought there was only two paths until I started working. And I spoke to somebody else and they went, like, you can do this and do this and do this. Those are the kind of things you just want to tell students and say, hey, you want to be a biology major. You know, you can actually do this, 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 this. this. Then the kid goes, oh, shit. OK, this actually is more interesting. I like this because that's tied to the math I like or whatever. Then you now, boom, done. But they don't do that. That's simple. Nobody's asking you to spoon feed, change the diaper. I'm saying when you talk, kindness counselor is sucking. Yeah, but what you what you what you advocating, or at least what you, what you guys, what you guys have said, or, or what no, you guys have said. No, 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 no. It's not about just being current in the time. What you basically were saying is that basically they have to teach you the end to end of your profession. No, 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 no. They Nobody's have to teach you the business. No, no. Like uh, the example of no, being a performing a performing okay. artist, they should yeah. teach you the business side as well as you the should, performance. No, no, side. no, no. We said they should. When you have electives that you yourself should be able to do. No, no. No, this is exactly why courses. we have courses. This is why we have internships. This is why we have every other supporting industry. That's why Northeastern is fucking great with that shit. With yeah, Northeastern is amazing, man. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying you know, that you don't, you don't get it, that it's not a matter of them telling you what to do. It's a matter of saying you laid out. There you agree with my here. point. Call no, just but they don't tell you what to do. lay out. That's the problem. <laughs> Seriously, they don't, and I'm hey, 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 no, they hey, don't hey. because you know what? It is look. I got his counselor here. was cool, man. No, she no, had I'm sitting out here. Sam, we went to the same school. I did it myself, but the problem is, is there are many other kids who just don't get it. <laughs> the people that I because I graduated and I'm looking at them now. I'm going wow, and they look at me and they go, look, at this. this is this is the part that I find shocking. They go, wow, oh, you're doing YouTube. How could you do that? Because you don't allow kids to think in college and expand, you can't go out of your own scope. No, it, I think between me and you, I think we show a very clear, um, a, a very clear example that you could go to the same college and have two totally different experiences. Yeah. Because I get what you're saying, and I agree with that. UMass at our probably at your time and my time wasn't the most helpful when it came to basically directing students. No, but no, no. The, like I tell you, there's only one, there's one department in UMass that I donate to on a constant basis. Your department was on point. No, 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 not even my department. It's the fine arts department. Because as a, as a um, what's it called, a student employee at the, at the fine arts uh, department, my, uh, the director of the finance department, my employers there basically were very supportive in basically me exploring a lot of different things and basically telling me about people they knew who were doing things similar to what I was doing and people I actually talk, talk to. And well, that's I why think I think I got the most out of it. And that had nothing to do with my major. Resources. I think I think that's unacceptable. I think you should have done it all on your own. <laughs> well, you see, I, like, 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 okay, thanks. <laughs> well, 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 I get no, you. No, no, Ron, no, no. As much as you're saying that, as much as you're saying that, a lot of money for well, Ron, you as much as you're saying that, figure out everything something on how to do it yourself. No, but see, as, as much as you're saying that one, what I'm saying is this are people who I, will wor I was working with, had nothing whatsoever to do with my major. So mm -hmm. you get experiences from so many different parts of life that you can't just sit down and say the college is going to give this to you. This was a work experience for me that ended up turning into lifelong friendships. And this is part of what you learn through life and part of the things, part of your resources in life.
This is part of what you take right, along with. I, I don't think you should so have the college access is, to that. I think you should have graduated. College. Now you're just being <laughs> now you're just being facetious. Yeah, that's I, very different. I, now I, you're just I, being I'm facetious. Taking, yeah, but because you're not, you're, 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 you're not trying to make a point anymore. You're not. I'm not. Oh, dude, you're not. You're not, you're not even you took at this point. At this point, you're just being facetious. That that college. I took your argument and I made an argument based on things you were saying. Now you're just being facetious and saying no. Colleges, colleges shouldn't give students the opportunity to meet people at work. Like you took my argument. You know what? <laughs> that's not even a weak point of my argument. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, okay, but okay, we can move on. We can, right. At this point, it's already devolved into basically five year old five year olds arguments. Let's just move on. Look, the matter of fact is this: is that uh, I'm right. Everything I said. Listen to me, guys. These three guys do not know anything. I'm just joking. But there are many sides to this argument, and at the end we of the day, we went a long way. Into yeah, that. we we spent yeah, nah, like we did, didn't we? I think long I think I think I think that. <laughs> Everyone should be able, once you go into school, should be able to get the at least access to the same opportunities. Because as you can see, Sam and I didn't have the same access to the same opportunities. I went to school at the same time. That's the thing. Yeah, so, yeah, we were in school at the same time. Yeah. So anyway, moving on to something you can get a good access opportunity and cheap, AT&T offering $15 packages for TV. <laughs> Man, look at that segue. I am a this, genius. This podcast not brought yeah. to you by AT&T. <laughs> oh, thank you. No, let, no, it's good. Let's move on. I've watched, like, I've, I've caught up to every episode of Admiral Room and everything. <laughs> so it would just turn to, like, I'd, I'd be here all day. <laughs> uh, 15, $15 package. Any guy, thoughts on this? Do you think it's a good move by AT&T? Oh, I think it's a smart move by AT and T. I mean, I, I think the traditional. This, this is them leveraging direct the the direct TV streaming, exactly. right? Yeah, yeah. So, so every, the, this entire industry is getting savaged by cord cutting behavior. So they need to do something. They need to have a response. What what I don't know and what we'll have to to wait and see is can an old traditional media company rebrand themselves into something more nimble, more exciting to cord cutters, more dynamic. Um, the baggage of AT&T, just those letters and direct TV as a traditional outlet still might not appeal, even if the service is pretty great. It's actually one of the best services out there. I mean, it, it looks part, solid. Yeah. It looks like yeah. a solid offering, but I'm not going to jump on it. And I'm happy with Google, I mean, with YouTube TV right now. Um, I'm so not. They charge me so much money. I need uh, damn it, get over it. <laughs> <laughs> But but I mean again that that's the, kinda, the that's best part is that you complained about that while it was a solution for you to watch the damn Super Bowl. I was I was sitting there going over YouTube. Canceled it. Canceled it. Canceled it. <laughs> Even when he had no solution to the Super Bowl that was there with him right there at the time. It's to this day that makes no sense. I had no idea, man, until I was doing this. Uh, anyway, um, moving on to some more interesting news. Amazon Prime officially announced the amount of users they had and they have a hundred million paying customers all dollar bills y'all mm -hmm. if you take it at the normal rate of amazon prime at not normal but the original rate at 99 dollars uh, 79 dollars no, 79 dollars originally 99 dollars now yeah no, yes yeah. yeah, so 79 dollars a year right if i'm not mistaken yeah. yeah 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 i mean that is just some sweet revenue right there and they offer a good amount of stuff for it, you know, to get yeah. to, to to get in there. Everybody loves a two day free shipping. Oh, it's, it's definitely worth it. Definitely that prime, worth it. that prime now. You click on that. Oh, get stuff delivered into all the. I, I scared, even, I scared my even, mom. I scared my mom with that recently. What? <laughs> she, she wanted. She wanted to make something in the kitchen. We didn't need it. I didn't. I have all the tools. You know, I have in my in my apartment for baking. I didn't actually have a hand mixed blender, so I needed to buy a new one. And I was like, oh, let me buy it on Prime now. And it was here in an hour. And she thought it was going to get here in like two days. And here's popping up at the door than in the bag. She was like, is this the world we live in now? Like, yes, yes mother. No, Your no, son's just, a wizard. Your son's a wizard. Just wait until the drones arrive. Oh, yeah. It'd be the I... delivery time for that, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's interesting how uh, Amazon is growing. The market cap is super high right now. I mean, the talking in Wall Street is who is going to hit a trillion dollar market cap. Everybody thought it was Apple, but that is Apple has been stuck at that 800 range for a while. Um, Amazon has jumped up. Google as well has jumped up. And Microsoft is the one that's growing the fastest because yeah. the cloud services. But that's just like an answer yeah. note uh, there. Uh, the other company that's doing really well, and I am so happy just to disclose I do own Netflix stock. <laughs> just to throw it out there. Netflix is has almost the same market cap as Disney. It is bigger yeah. than Warner Brothers, Fox, all those other companies combined. And they, uh, they have 110 million paying customers. 
uh, they added 2 million in the US and 8 point, I believe 8.3 uh, this last quarter. They are growing. Yeah. And, and right now, so you know, those talks of Disney buying Netflix is over. Can't. I don't know, I, I don't know why they started. Yeah. No, I'm just saying they do it because there were talks of Disney making its own. Um, oh no, that's not service, oh, no, the, and they thought they were going to be. No, okay, no but people, people thought initially a few years it's ago good. that yeah. instead of Disney building its own, we're just going to buy Netflix because that's the, that's Disney 101. Why build your own? <laughs> <when> you <buy? laughs> that is true, though. I mean, they have they have uh, all yeah, the yeah, but, they, but, but, they, but the thing is, they they wouldn't want to have to manage other people's stuff. So, because that turns into yeah. not managing their stuff, having to manage other people's stuff too. They rather not do that. They rather just they don't want the conflict of interest. They rather yeah. just manage their own thing and watch it fail like all the other streaming services do. That's not named Netflix or Amazon. I, I don't see why we keep doing this, but okay. Well, because because you see some holdouts. Like we were very skeptical about Amazon as a streaming service, and then they started producing their own content, and they followed more of an HBO model, and then that worked. There are models that you can replicate. And I oh, think yeah. Disney's looking at their catalog saying, you know, we, we can be an HBO or an Amazon unto ourselves. Unless that thing shoves every single piece of their content into there from the beginning. Yep. Yeah. If it turns into a thing where they got like half of their stuff up there and they keep no, hacking no, no. back and forth between what they put on and what they don't. It's just gonna turn people. They, the only the only off. problem they have, and they've kind of stated it is, is the Netflix Amazon show. I so not Netflix uh, Marvel shows, yeah. and that one they might actually just keep them because those tune more adults, and they don't necessarily want to go that. Why can't why can't they just, just sit and license their thing like 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 legitimately? Somebody's not paying money just to watch one show on one specific network. Like they're not doing that. Yeah, but some, somebody somebody you want, somebody use, uses that's the usually the gateway to start, and then they are, that's what Netflix does. It's like they offer okay. you one cool thing, and then when you jump into Netflix, you go, "Oh, they have this plus this old show you like plus this." Oh, I didn't finish yeah. this. And yeah, you, but, but yeah, but you, don't you, you but, 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 but to me, it's like if you know this is a Disney property, don't screw them over and not put it over there. Like I mean, that, that's, that's my like I said, I, I don't know. I'm just saying that that's where they are. But I do know that it's all the whole Disney catalog, which is why the Disney catalog left Netflix. Remember, Netflix had a deal for every single Disney item. And then it, right now, it's only uh, the current Marvel movies and the current um, movies that came out last year. And those are going once their service launches next year. So everything of Disney is on there. Plus, you're going to get every single so there's going to be marvel shows there's going to be star wars shows like everything this is what happened isn't apple, apple doing the same thing too apple's doing the same well, thing apple too. has its own like, streaming yeah they've been service. dipping yeah. their toe into so it. it's, it's it's more like and they've been so shows. Shows. this is what happens when you have too many mbas in the room you get 25 shows, different products that are not human focused because everybody goes does it make money though and show here so but no i think disney zone is going to be a big genre because they are going to they're going to drop everything they have into it you know mm -hmm. i don't think they're going to jump everything they I, have don't think they I don't think they are because you know disney this disney is the master of the 50th anniversary of cinderella in 4d hd hk 4k 3d it makes too it makes too much sense so those that's are why they're not going to do it afterwards. Like it, they're going to drop. It's going to be in there eventually, but just not immediately. It's, it's all going to be there. It's just not a common like. It's not like they're going to drop everything. I guarantee. Here's what's going to happen. People are going to log in and they're going to go. Can I get my '90s cl uh, classic movies from Disney? And when they're not there, the pissing oh, yeah. is going to start. Oh, yeah. and that's and that's what they're going to do. They're not going to include the stuff that people really want to see. They're going to want you to come back later for that, and everyone's going to go no. And then go back to Netflix, and but, like, but, if, if they drop a bomb, happen. like the, if they if they drop it where they go, boom! Here's everything, all our past catalog. We have everything up until everything up until the night to the 2000s is available on there. After the 2000s, it gets a little funky, but anything from 99 and and, and older is already up there online available for you to watch. That's a great way for it to start. Yeah, but, if, but, if, but, if it, but if they don't do that from the start. <laughs> And they and they do this messing and picking around thing. It's gonna piss people off because the, the funny thing is that's what the WWE Network did. They didn't drop everything initially. They didn't even drop the Money Night War stuff initially. They cherry picked around with it. And the only reason people kept subscriptions around is because they get the pay per views for ten bucks a month. 
now that's why people keep it around one one of the things because i would love to like it would be it would be awesome like i would love to sign up for a disney streaming subscription and then catch like those old 1970s like wild wilderness world of disney's like jesus christ oh, they, had oh, those. I, they, just, <laughs> they, they just have to make sure over all the old cartoons that they put a placement up there that said this was racist back then and this is not our oh, views right now <laughs> <laughs> i see someone has been um someone has been paying attention to uh reddit news feeds right with yeah, uh goldberg and um yeah whoopi goldberg oh no no what, what was what was that about i was thinking about something else with the lisa poo thing oh so um oh, oh no. yeah that, the lisa poo thing is also one of them so whoopi goldberg has a I think a uh, disclaimer at the start of I think the Looney Tunes what was it uh, a collection right there was a collection yeah. that they had and she basically just said just remember this was from the 70s at that time you know the you know, there, were, there were there were stereotypes and st- things like that just basically getting people prepared not to basically all be all SJWs about a lot of the things they saw in the cartoon well yeah. I, and also just like properly I think it's fair enough we, I think we could, we could change these things but it, it's important for history yeah. to maintain them it's like when people yeah. complain yeah. about yeah. You know, uh, removing the N word from like Tom Sawyer, Huckleberry Finn. Oh, that's just stupid. Yeah. We, we need to point to a history where we can show that we've made progress. You can't um, like watch history, man. You but, should but the, watch the history. point that I was getting to is going back to Disney and, and, and seeing them roll out that catalog. I think one of the reasons why these companies cherry pick is it's probably difficult to go back and renegotiate contracts from the 40s the 50s the 60s where there was not explicit writing as to what future distribution and monetization of that distribution would resemble i think once we get into the 70s and 80s and we start to see the proliferation of home recording equipment those contracts are easier to go back and examine the potential financial impact of moving them to a streaming service um but you know if you've got a a long past actor whose family is now managing their estate on a popular product from the 1960s and you can't get it on your platform because they're asking too much money that's what's ultimately going to be a difficult situation for disney because disney's not going to play ball they're a take my ball and go home kind of company (laughs) they're not going to pay outlandishly for older content just to make it a more complete um service for people subscribing yeah uh just to quickly round up uh netflix uh, market cap right now is 143.1 billion Mm -hmm. disney is 151.3 billion only eight billion dollar difference that's how big netflix is right now yeah, that's <laughs> from DVDs and through the mail. Yeah, no, but I think um, uh, Richie A made a very good point. Uh, with all these subscription services, um, you know, the costs are adding up yep. really fast. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. like, I, I know personally, I have uh, I use Netflix, um, Hulu, and uh, and um, Amazon because Amazon's free, right? Um, and even that, I'm still thinking. Well, that's not free. No, Amazon I, Video it, 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 comes it, it, with my Prime it, it, subscription, so for me, yeah, but, it, but no, but that's that, that's still ninety nine bucks yeah, a year it, it, that you pay for that. That's included. That's yeah, included. So, that's so the thing about that's in, about Amazon. Yeah, go ahead. Adding adding in the cost of Amazon Prime, um, factoring that in and dividing that up monthly with Amazon, Hulu, Netflix, and YouTube TV, we're still paying less than if we added a premium TV option to our cable plan. Mm. It's close. Now oh yeah, no, but, but it's, it's like cheaper, but it is better, adding up. Getting a much better service. But it's do you think there's a lot of adding... duplication as well, though? There's there's still a, a, a lot of duplication around places because sometimes oh, you go yeah. on Netflix. On Netflix, oh, yeah. you see some things from HBO, and then you have HBO Go, so you also have it on HBO. And then if you have Hulu with stars on there, you get the Stars app. There are a lot of like duplicates there. And I mean, I mean they are, but I think I think some some things about the services is about right me for me right now it's about what shows i'm watching and which ones are tied so for instance i just finished watching lost in space also carbon that is strictly netflix it would never go be anywhere right and, and then actually, you know, when Hulu you has a couple really solid yeah original. hulu has some i mean no, there's oh, yeah. like, animated sales coming back up Dude, uh, the what the path i'm like i don't know what the show is about anymore but i'm addicted to that show <laughs> and also there's um the jeffrey donovan the the guy from burn notice has oh yeah he has uh oh yeah uh the one where he's like a something i Right. Yeah, like, yeah, but he like thought he had powers. That's <laughs> not bad. I, I had that on in the background, but I, I blitzed through that in two days while while working on other Which, videos. Like that, wow. that was a pretty solid. I like that made me happy to have Hulu. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I I enjoyed that one. So yeah. there's 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 a ton of for for third party content from studio produced content. Yeah, there's a ton of overlap. 
but I'm less and less. I, I feel that that burning desire to watch other companies' movies, and I actually am kind of getting into the vibe of what does Netflix have out this month? What's going to be new? Exactly. One? Yeah. What is Amazon bringing out? Because they're rivaling traditional media, uh, not only tra traditional media distribution, but traditional media. Well, you know, Amazon has that billion dollar Game of Thrones, not Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings show coming up. Jesus. A billion dollars hey, production so, cost. So, so, so this is this is my, my, my take on it is, Amazon has put out some good shows there, but nothing that's been amazing. I am a little bit worried that Amazon is wasting money and I'm also a little excited that someone's doing a true Lord of the Rings billion dollar series. Billion dollar series. I'm, I'm not worried about them wasting money. I want to yeah. see some spectacle. I want them to blow yeah. me away. It's like the, the, <laughs> the businessman in me goes, the <laughs> in me goes, yeah. No, this is one where like, if I see like Sauron, like I need to be quaking at home going, oh my God. <laughs> Because it looks so good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it'll be interesting to see how that all pans out. But um, speaking of um, something else that uh, uh, segue is not there. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to this couldn't be nope. Uh, Razor had a visionary idea last year because now, besides uh, Xiaomi jumping into the mobile uh, gaming phone market, Nubia has a new phone. It's called the Red Magic smartphone. It is priced at $397, comes out April 25th. Oh. It is powered by the Snapdragon 8. Uh, 35. It has a six inch display, uh, 2160 by 1080, eight gigs of RAM, up to 128 gigabytes of storage, 3800 milliamp battery, got Game Boost, some of this thing. Doesn't have all the high end features that, you know, Razer has, like the display and also the uh, uh, DAC built into uh, to this thing. So it is, um, it's interesting. Plus, there's rumors now that, of course, you know, is going to jump in. Asus is going to come out with an ROG phone. Uh, oh. So, so, well, Razor, so basically last year when Razor was talking about and they knew because Razor CEO came out and says the for one game they are actively a hundred million users in China. He was going, he specifically stated China. He didn't care about the US market. And he just knew he needed to get into that market and mm -hmm. carve out a space in that market. Because if you have a hundred million users for one mobile game, I can't remember the name of the game then that means there are a lot of people who are interested in that. And now everyone's, you know, at least the Chinese manufacturers, they're all jumping in and say, hey, well, this is our market. Yeah. This is, you know, our space. <laughs> let's, uh, let's yeah, just... I mean, where, where we used to kind of make fun of mobile focus for gaming, like Ouya or like um, NVIDIA getting into trying, trying to push Android into a gaming uh, audience. I think I think we've reached it. Uh, there, there's I, I remember a couple years back I was making fun of I, I think it was right around the launch of the 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 Xbox One and the PS4. I'm saying like, well, just buy an iPad. It it games in in 2K and it's it's better than a console. Like facetiously, just trying to get you guys mad. Um, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but now I think we've actually have crested into when you've got PUBG and Fortnite mobile, and they're actually pretty decent. They're not terrible uh, executions of those concepts for mobile audiences. I think now is the right time to start planting that seed. But the inter these oh, go ahead. The interesting thing is about these mobile first phones. I feel like they're all gaming phones that they're all missing the one thing. Well, they're building it or hopefully they're building it. I saw Razer was building up on it, but they're all kind of missing the one thing that I think will push this over the top that Samsung has which is Dex. If you can get this running with some type of desktop platform to get people yeah. just be able to drop their phones in, cable, and you know, keyboard, mouse, and just kind of go, and it's sort of a natural thing for them to do, it'd be great. And, but a lot of these phones know. don't have that dock or don't have that. I know Razer's kind uh, of- But, but don't, don't, don't forget that basically, if you look at Dex uses a USB type C and also the Nintendo Switch uses a USB type C. So the hardware is there. <laughs> yeah, so, so, no, so the hard the hardware is absolutely there, but it's that software that needs to be developed there for exactly. it. And I, that's I, where I, Samsung's I mean, jumping I mean, ahead. I, this, I, that's I, where that's where this could easily be a thing, where I, I Samsung could turn on the switch in a minute, and then all of a sudden every esports mobile thing is sponsored by them with every single Galaxy based yeah. device running decks and oh, yeah, out of the Galaxy, game. Now, 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 wait, wait, they could Thanos this shit in two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> What's really what's really funny though is that you know a Samsung will do it because they can sell a dock. But if you look at a Huawei, all you need is a cable. 
like their desktop mode doesn't require any right. other fancy yeah. hardware. You get a USB C to HDMI out and you're done. Yes, but yeah. that's not a lot of money. So Samsung selling a dock will make this look way more legitimate, even though it's completely unnecessary. Yeah, but, 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 but yes, you know, with the dock, you get to charge your phone. You can't yeah, do while you do it well. Wow. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah, and it's also charging. it's also an and it can plug in more perfect and it can plug in more perfect perfect well. yeah but, but the whole the thing, thing is giving itself the big thing about the stuff is you can actually connect your own internet like a separate um wired internet ethernet cable man none of that wi-fi so does serve a purpose uh, but yeah, you, it can be done with a wire for cheaper. Um, and you would lose out on all the other things that Doc has, but it's definitely probably work just uh, as well. Okay, so see, yes. like if I could just plug in one cable, like for example, if I could power draw off, off of HDMI, or my next TV will probably have some kind of USB C or Thunderbolt style connection, then the phone could be charging off of that one cable from the TV, and I just have a wireless controller anyway. So, so I, you know, like my my PS4 isn't connected over Ethernet, so I'd be fine with the Wi-Fi that I currently yeah. have to drive my current. Dear God, man, what are you doing? So, so literally, <laughs> hey, I connect wireless as well. A, a ten dollar. What's, what's wrong with you, men? It's next. Will, right, will no. <laughs> what a Dex dock can do, but I see, I see what you're saying. I mean, it would be nice to have like a like a continuum style dock for if you yeah. really want to make that but, robust. So, so basically, I mean, it's not necessary. Yeah, so basically, this is the this is the dock, and this is exactly what it is. You have um, you have you uh, the power connecting a USB Type C. You have a HDMI, uh, Ethernet, and then two USBs. So it does kind of give you options. So, so to put but, it yeah, to, it's to, not necessary. To put it in perspective, when when I did the pre briefing for the Galaxy S nine, the demo for Dex, you know what they showed off first? It wasn't it wasn't power. Or no, it was Final Fantasy plugged in. <laughs> and I do it. The guy was playing and just like. But, you know, when you really want to take that game to the next level and put it on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was playing off it, the games, um, off the, the pad itself, because the dex pad is different. It lays flat. Mm. And while while it was on the screen, I was like, ah. So which is the question I want to bring up is, you know, we all dismiss Razer's laptop connections. How does that does that fit into into this in this mindset as well? Or, or maybe not? I mean, I mean it, 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 should the game, dock. it should have been a dock. Yeah, not not not, not a, made a dock. Dock. Like, I, I think I said this before when they okay. created it. I was like, this should just be a dock that I plug in and it just kind of goes. Yeah, but, if you, but that means, there. Because it means you don't need to have a monitor as well. You have it screen. I'm just saying, yeah, but the, think the, of it that way. The thing is, I'm, I'm looking at yeah, But screen. nobody wants to game on a monitor that small. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. if you're gaming on a phone, you can. You can yeah, game but, 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 yeah. But if I want a game bigger, I'm, I want bigger display. I don't want it yeah. smaller to just a I mean, not I, so small I, display. I, I, it's just, it's fourteen. There yeah, fourteen inch gaming laptops out there. I mean, yeah. you know, so I'm just saying that it's a different aspect to what we're talking about. But it still gives you that. It gives you extra battery life. It gives you more storage as well. You know, I don't. You know, and I think you can load in your games from that as well. So if you have a lot of mobile games, that's something you could actually have stored in there. Um, just, just it's a it's a different option. So, to so, speak. so, because I, I own I own a blade and I like my razor, but I'm not a part of the razor cult. Mm -hmm. I think there is a good business play to be made for having proprietary razor branded solutions. And so, to Warren's point, they should have a dock. They absolutely should. Yeah. But I could see an entire spectrum of you know like maybe a, a simple razor tv connect and it's like a cable and a like a little power adapter mm -hmm. manager so you can charge your phone at the same time the razor dex version or continuum version where you've got like multiple io take that up to more of maybe like a switch style cradle so that you've got hardware tactile buttons for your gaming and then take that all the way up to like a gaming laptop experience and if you put those snakes on the back of it with some rgb customizations <laughs> then the razor fan base will support that ecosystem i don't think you draw many people into that ecosystem but i think the people who are already there would seriously consider that range of products true but i just think even if somebody were out of the ecosystem buying they might buy one of those options you're definitely oh, right. totally you know it's totally. like okay you know the cable hmm, but i do like that dock it's really nice even though i don't need the cable, i only need the cable i might as well pick that up so i i, I do hear you at that point i think that's actually pretty wise uh razor checks please um, I know, <laughs> man. Just giving away all our great ideas today. Uh, moving on, uh, New York is New York is going to in, in, in 
Uh, he said the wrong thing. Yeah, I, I, the I, link I, and I was yeah. like, I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I just got into that myself. I was like, I, I, was, I was like, wait, I thought I wrote in. It's oh. a text <laughs> story, but it's not the kind of text story we would normally cover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Sam, can you take it off? <laughs> yeah, well, because uh, I, I fooled myself. I, didn't, I, I, I thought we weren't going to talk about it, but okay, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I'm not too even versed in this, but yeah, basically, uh, New York is investigating cryptocurrency exchanges. Uh, yay! Now, which, uh, which, which they do, they do need to do, because a lot of um, cryptocurrency exchanges have been popping up, and um, there are really not a lot of um, regulatory of uh, rules. Um, yeah. attached to these uh, bit currency exchanges. So if you think about bit currency, you normally, a lot of people um, would think they're very savvy about uh, about Bitcoins or all these cryptocurrencies, but you find a lot of people still don't even use their own wallets. They don't have a wallet saved somewhere on hard drive. They're still depending primarily on the wallets that are provided by these exchanges or some other service. So if they go belly up, if these people decide they basically just want to go, just take your cryptocurrency and fade, you're out of luck. <laughs> Yeah. And there's no regulation um, a, a, a lot of times around this whole cryptocurrency uh, uh, exchanges mm -hmm. or transactions. So yeah. it, it's a good idea. I think overall it's a good thing. Yeah, because what happens is there's a lot of there's a lot of this is a lot of exchanges out there, and everyone has access to many of these exchanges. There are a few that are the bigger ones out there that there are a little more about people that want to follow the guidelines. A lot of them call out. They say, "Hey, we follow U.S. U.S. security guidelines, even though we don't have to. We do follow these specific." rules and regulations because they want they want you to entrust them a bit more but there's a ton of them out there that just pop up that don't have any of that type of regulation many of them aren't even based here in the united states oh yeah and 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 and, and i think it's a good idea to research some of these because i think a lot of these um a lot of these um uh um current exchanges that i've seen and i've read through uh, a lot of these exchanges should be kind of blocked from the u.s to be honest with you yeah they, they should be they, 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 there's a lot of them that are just absolutely just untrustworthy, cheap, easily hacked, and stuff like that. And and also, I, I think that's the, not the, all the, of them. The, there are there, are, there yeah. are some good ones that are overseas that are. No, I, mean, I, can, well. I can think of a few. There, there are a few overseas. Yeah. Uh, one or two that I that I, that I have used that are overseas. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, they're good. They're, they're, like with everything, they're good. They're good players and bad actors as well. Yeah. But uh, I think. The, the thing, if anyone um, is really going to say, because I'm always someone who's like, hey, keep the government out of it as long as possible, because when the government gets in, it's basically always a headache. But for this, for this, I would say we need regulation because I used to, uh, yeah. Mount Gox comes to mind, right? Yeah. Mount Gox comes to mind. Big Connect. <laughs> yeah, Big, Big Connect yeah. comes to mind. So if you go out there, just go on the internet and Google Big Connect, Google uh, Mount Gox, and uh, find out what happened there. It, it, it's very sad that people lost millions. And, <laughs> and, even, and even look up exit scan. And ICOs, there's a lot. Oh, of yeah. Oh, yeah. There was one this too. week. That's just what I was going to talk about. Well, well that was the fake one, though. That's the one that was a, they, they fake that. Yeah. They're a bunch of idiots. Yeah. They faked it. <laughs> they faked it. He, he like, you see, talk about um, save droid, whatever it was. They faked it. The one where he said, Peace out. Uh, yeah. yeah. He sent out a tweet saying, Peace out. And all the investors yeah. were like, yeah. What? They did a video <laughs> showing that the office was empty. <laughs> no, oh, they faked oh, that, bro. He, he, raised like, he raised like 50 million for the ISO. Yeah. And, uh, just said peace out. Everybody was like, "Where did he just?" Yeah, go? This is, this because they were actually tracking well. The company was doing well. Was tracking well. The ICO was doing well. And then I don't know where he just puts a tweet with a ball and was like, "Yeah, it, it was probably one of the worst marketing decisions oh, ever." They, you know, that, that was all fake. That was like a uh, one plus type. Whoever they hired to do that. Yeah, no, but 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 it is it is very telling because he he could do that. Yeah, and they could do that. It really. Isn't no consequences. Much of a consequence for him doing it. There isn't that. because there isn't. you're not invest. So you, you're buying a you're not you're not you're not buying a fiat currency. You're, you're just buying, buying an asset. Yeah, it's an and asset. It, it doesn't exist in the real world. <laughs> so it's a code. So it, it, it's it's, uh, it's a code. It's, it's an interesting place. Anyway, let's move on because I know we've we, we ranted quite a bit on that. Um, on a topic that wasn't on, the, on our topic list. Uh, it wasn't our topic list. You put it on our topic. <laughs> no, our topic we were talking about was actually Qualcomm laying off 1,500 people. Then we went to education. Oh, How the hell did we go. get there? Yeah. How did we get there? <laughs> wow, yeah, that was the, <laughs> Somebody that was go back video. in the video and in the comments, explain how we got there. Yeah. If, if I remember correctly, we, we oh, took a no, left this back and then a right, no, no, and no. then we drove down lanes. Did and then somebody use there. Apple Maps? <laughs> Someone used MapQuest. Someone yeah. using MapQuest. Quick, quick one here. Um, New York Times, AT&T and Verizon 
uh, and GSMA are being investigated over eSIMs with collusion. So, um, yeah, according to reports, the DOJ is looking at evidence that these parties work together in an attempt to limit embedded eSIMs while it's supposed to let customers switch wireless carriers without ch changing out hardware SIMs. The allegation is that oh, yeah. AT&T and Verizon, which combined up to 7% of wireless subscribers, wanted the ability to lock the devices uh, on their networks, even if they had an eSIM. Yeah, but they've been doing it. Yeah, so... They've been yeah. doing it. And, you have to fight and, like hell. To, you have to fight like hell to get them to unlock it. Yeah, yeah. And it, let let's say that you know DOJ actually does find a there there. What they're gonna get fined, tens of thousands of dollars or something. Like, I, I seriously doubt any actual repercussions will be served yeah. to companies like AT and T and Verizon. They they get to they get to play by their own rules. Somebody's got to. Somebody would have to come in with some pressure and push that down. Similar to what. What Google did with the whole spectrum thing against Verizon and forcing things. Yeah, you know? I, I, I would advocate them doing this like they did with the tobacco companies, basically making AT and T, Verizon, and these other companies pay for consumer awareness ads um, on you know the, the airwaves, basically telling people that your phone has these features and you should ask to move your device that you've paid for somewhere else. You don't need to buy a new phone to move to a different carrier. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that would they, be very, very nice. Well, they, but this is eSIMs. These are SIMs that are built inside the actual phones that you can't take yeah. out, which they're trying to lock. Verizon officially cannot lock. By law, they cannot lock any phones because uh, that's how they got that extra spectrum of what they call that 4G. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. they, basically, back. They've, already, they've walked it back. They, they, you can, they're not yeah, locking Verizon's devices. locking phones again. Yeah, uh, sure? Bloomberg report, yeah, because Bloomberg reporting that uh, Apple is among the companies complaining about this. Apple is probably one of the big ones. Well, I know they've been doing it to iPads, but I, didn't, I don't think they were doing it to. No, 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 no. So, so it, it's so. not it's not that they've gone whole hog and that became an industry standard, but they there's no regulatory oversight from the FCC to enforce that. So they actually put out that I, I forget what their specious reasoning was, but it was along the lines of "Won't someone think of the children? We need to protect phones and make things more secure." Something, yeah, I remember that. I remember and, and so it, it's a go. They're, they're which which, which phones are they locking down? I think all, if I'm not mistaken. I think they're like it. It's not that they're all locked now; it's that they will be locked. Be locked yeah, because basically the the agreement they had was they shouldn't. There was no law binding. Let me see if I can find so, it. which is basically they did it for a while. And like, nah, we don't need to. So, so the way this thing works is if if you think you're the administration's the FCC chairman in that, in that administration is going to pursue. I remember, now it's changed, uh, right? Exactly. Yeah. Oh no, the FCC, um, um, the current FCC chairman used to be a lawyer for Verizon. So yeah. they know, so they, know. <laughs> they know they can do yeah. whatever. So C CNET is one of the first articles that popped up, but their title is Verizon says it's locking its phones down to combat theft. So phone theft is why we can't do Yeah, to, to, obviously to protect consumer wait, wait, wait. From property, we have to make your, your <laughs> SIM, really? <laughs> Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's like you guys are saying it's like we have to protect the children by taking <laughs> away people's phones or making people pay for two three different phones in one year because it protects the children this is what's going to happen because for them kids for them kids. kids but you know the funny thing is is samsung and apple grow stronger and pushing their own brand and also pushing their own phones to sell directly especially with their own monthly plans they're going to run into a lot of shit with this i mean they're still it's still the same thing where they're still the you know the the carriers here still run the show when it comes to hardware, but slowly but surely that all that stuff's gonna start changing around. So they can sit here and lock the phone until somebody sits there and goes, "Won't you just buy from Samsung directly?" I can do that, and that's it. as soon as they kind of get that idea, they know they can do that. It's a wrap. Yeah. Speaking of buying directly, um, all the credit card companies have united uh, to actually have a checkout system: Visa, Mastercard, Discover, and American Express. Before they all had separate, there was like a Visa checkout, there was a Mastercard pass. Uh, this is to combat PayPal, which is a very easy experience. We all know how it is that sometimes you go to a website and you don't want to put in your information, you like see PayPal checkout. Walmart uses PayPal sometimes as well. So it's very easy for you to just click on that and not actually sign up for uh, like an account with that service. Mm -hmm. So the credit card companies are coming to do this. And as you know, uh, Sam said, this is, uh, took them a while. <laughs> I'm shocked it took him this long. Took him a, yeah, good. Yeah, you got you to get a bunch of other companies and competing against you know, to agree on something. So, this, so they're doing nothing but hissy fitting at each other until they get beaten down so bad that they then they have to 
build to, to build something that's going to automatically fail. See, see ISIS. I was going to say, is ISIS all over again? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly oh. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so bad. Like, I'm sorry, but I feel so bad for these companies, especially with ISIS. It was so bad. It's like they came out with a name for an app. Like, we're going forward with this. Yay, everyone is signing up. And then terrorism. <laughs> that would have failed anyways. If they, they could have they could have named the thing like Happy Glow Glow Button, and it wouldn't have mattered. It would have still would have failed anyways because well, Samsung least, and Apple would have crushed them. At least the person who named it and uh, all these created that whole thing or who was the head of it can can say can blame the terrorist organization even if you yeah, exactly. he, 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 now he's saying well it probably would have worked you know i mean it could have but nay not. no it wasn't going to work it never was going to work but you guys I mean, failed long before that excuse would be there for it but uh yeah so that's uh i think that's pretty much it for um stories for this week uh want to say uh, uh first of all um richard uh, thank you. Richard won the Steel Series headset. Um, but he said that, you know what, since he lives in the UK, I shouldn't send it. I should actually give it to someone else. So oh, I appreciate nice, right? that uh, nice. gesture. So we are going to pick somebody from the comments. Juan, I know I didn't mention this earlier, but can oh, you? Sorry. Actually... Yeah. Um, hold on. I'll do. You're saying sorry. I mean, I was the one who put it in there. It's ridiculous. No, no, no worries. Hold on. Hold on. Scroll, <laughs> scrolling through, scrolling through. Um, um, and do you remember who's who's won recently? Because I don't remember. Just I, if you tell me the names, I'll know. Sorry, Derek. No, you again, because you won. And I landed on Derek. Yeah, I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hold on, hold on. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. Let me do it again. Okay, ready? Scroll, 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 and stop. Jonathan Jones has Jonathan Jones won anything? I don't think Jonathan has won. Jonathan Jones is well, has won now. Shield. So, uh, so go I'm calf. At least one now. Well, congratulations, Jonathan. You won a Steel Series Actus Five gaming headset. Uh, thank you, Ronald. Ronald also mentioned he won his Total Beach headset as well. <laughs> Dang, Ronald is, uh, is very uh, honest. It's like, no, no, I've won just in <laughs> case I get picked. I've already won. So <laughs> we got to be we like. <laughs> um, so, Jonathan, uh, basically hit me up on uh, Twitter and just basically um, send a link with your YouTube account so I can verify you and then I can uh, give you, I can send the headset to you. So, congratulations, Captain America. I'll see you next Thursday. Yo, <laughs> next week, right? Yeah, oh, it's awesome. It is. I keep reading. It's like, oh yeah, yeah. It's like the end of the month, and you're like realizing, oh god, we're a week away from the end. Of the month. <laughs> I'm so it's excited about good, this man. movie. It is. It's going to be. It's going to be a lot of us. I just, I just, I, I just want to see Captain America catch Thanos's two fingers and break, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like crush Captain America. America. A lot of a lot of people die in that movie. I, I want to see massive amounts of death. Uh, I, want I just see want real casualties. Yeah, yeah, real casualties. Real casualties. What Why does anyone? Oh, oh God! What does anyone care about that? What casualties in these movies? They're you not know, really not. Yeah, because they're not really dying, but they gotta go. Uh, you know, they, they, they barely, they barely even die in the comic books. Like you pay attention to Joe Schmo with the white shirt walking by that just got hit with the meteor in the background. Like you really care if he lived or died? No, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about the heroes. They gotta yeah. go. Like, you know, Iron Man's gotta die. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> and no, I think, think it like, might, War, man. War Machine being one of my favorite favorite comic book characters in the Marvel universe. Captain America's gonna die. He's like, he's like the only guy that gets crippled. Like yeah, he's the no, only right? one with lasting injuries. Really? <laughs> you took out Rhodey? Come on. <laughs> no, don't forget. Maybe he, no, no, don't, don't forget Black he, he Widow, died and, and then they brought him Hawkeye back. Or, yeah. 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 Black Widow or Hawkeye. Hawkeye should be. Out there, like, no, it's going to be Captain America. So somebody watching, the, story, the, story, the story points to Captain America. I was one. watching a yeah, clip. A clip that just released with Black Widow fighting the Black Order. Oh. Uh, God, and you know, I, like, I like to bitch about power levels and black mm -hmm. should not fight anyone. I was like, uh, a cap, yeah. See, but the only people who should be remain, who, who who will, who should remain standing after this whole fight is said and done. Spidey, Hulk, not even Spidey, no, not even Spidey. But, but Spidey was still still live. Spidey was still live. No, dude. <laughs> Thanos, okay, so let's put it this way. Thanos, Thanos is, people, people, if, if we're going to be realistic about this, Thanos is a freaking god, okay? Oh, yeah. We're going to be realistic about god. comic books? Think about no, I mean, like, realistic as, in, you know, realistic as in a comic sense, like comic yeah. book realism. Yeah. Like, 
Thanos is a freaking god, okay? <laughs> and he has the freaking gauntlets that basically shuts up existence, okay? Or wipes out half the people in the freaking universe. Yeah, the only people that should be standing are probably the Hulk, Thor, and probably maybe Captain Scarlet Marvel. Witch. No, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. That's no, it. Captain Marvel, though. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cosmic yeah. powers, yeah. yeah. Captain Marvel. Those four, maybe. <laughs> Everyone else is like done. <laughs> but, but, I, but I think I think Richie A nailed it because Iron Man got that plot armor. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That yeah, is true. Richie. His new armor yeah. is like is like Wakanda tech mixed with just extra. Don't forget, don't forget space. Don't forget space, okay? Because and he I has mean, to bring in the other guys from space. He's, he's, he's the great unifier, man. The great unifier. Look at how they look. Think about it, right? We watched Black Panther, we saw the tech there, and then we were like, whoa, Tony Stark doesn't have it. And next thing we see the trailer of uh, Infinity War, and his thing just goes, shh. I was like, Man, you be watching Black Panther too, bro. Is that what it is? <laughs> I see how it is. Uh, it's like literally like, that. That is cultural. <laughs> Blood so like, I, that was actually perfect. <laughs> wow. It works in so many, on so many different levels. So many yeah. different levels. Yeah, I know. Anyway, guys, we come to the end of the show. Thank you for watching, and we go to the part of the show where we talk about what we have on the channel and what we can expect next week. <laughs> So, uh, Mr. Warren Bowman, you want to kick it off? What uh, do you have on your channel right now? What can we expect next uh, week? Got nothing, uh, nothing new up right now, but um, hopefully next week I have some long-term reviews that I'm finishing up that I'm hoping to kind of get finished up this weekend and post up for you guys. All right, cool. Dig it. Juan. Yeah, um, so uh, this last episode of New Egg Now, we had the developer, uh, one of the developer leads from Spurios. Uh, yeah, I saw, I saw some vector. That was a really fun conversation, and uh, I'm hoping we'll plan like a field trip because they they detailed their whole V arcade. Um, yeah, I'm, they, I'm they've still... got a v, they've got a Creed uh, VR game, uh, yeah. boxing game. We play as Adonis Creed. I was like, I was like, I'm, I want to see that. I want to see. Dude, that. And, and especially because like I've I've spent tens of minutes with Sprint Vector, and like I I, I leave that VR headset soaked. <laughs> so I want to <laughs> see what Creed does because that's gonna kick my ass. Yeah. Um, but I'm also stealing this from my co-host Trisha, where they have a VR arcade, and so we're gonna start calling it the V arcade. Um, yes. But we're gonna try and go hook that up soon too. But I mean, just to see the interview, if you guys want to check that out, that's on the New Egg channel. I finally, finally finished my long-term review of the Samsung Go Mic Mobile. This is a huge step for mobile content production. Uh, if, if you need to capture high quality audio, if you want a good wireless system, something that's not going to break the bank, I have a 17 minute review of my experiences using this. Uh, samples in windy conditions, uh, studio samples in a soundproofed environment, and uh, then also the differences between the lavalier and the handheld microphone that you can pair with this. I've, I am ridiculously impressed with what this little mighty mouse receiver is capable of. So you guys can check that out on my channel. And then of course, every Monday morning, I've got my own tech cranky, uh, self produced. I'm just going to talk and ramble on about the news podcast, the Monday morning tech chat show. So I'll see you after the weekend and we can talk about some more techies. Actually, someone did die. Quicksilver died. <laughs> oh, oh, you mean the guy that showed up from one movie? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly. And the he guy that shouldn't actually but, but, die. But he I'm dead, sorry. though. Is he dead, though? He yeah. dead, though. He's dead. But, but yeah, so I've got cool stuff. Yeah, your death. I've got cool, cool stuff to watch. Quicksilver. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but watch my stuff. True, true. Uh, thank you very much, Juan. Uh, for us, uh, we have a couple of videos. We did our final uh, take on the Nokia Steel HR. If you're looking for a smartwatch, that maybe is a smartwatch, but it's more fitness. Um, this is something you definitely take a look at, so go check it out. Uh, we have our review of the Huawei MateBook X Pro. I have to say, man, that, look, Huawei did an excellent thing on that laptop. It is thin, it is beautiful, and I can actually use it to work. I can render that video at some decent, hardware, yeah. decent time, so. Yeah, um, I was That's quite impressed. With this. I saw the review on that. It's actually the video is really good, by the way. But um, the, the the device is amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. It's one of those. Cause there's one somebody. A bunch of people commented and said a bunch of tech reviewers are pushing this hard. Why we must have paid us? No, they sent us the laptop, and literally, it is, it is good. I, I was impressed with that. Somebody did talk about it. Said why we spying on you with the laptop, and 
besides I just had lack when I was like, you know, Microsoft has a lot of data. Right? Uh, it's not even that. It's like <laughs> the re the reason most camcorders or most um, cams come with a flip cover these days. Yeah, it's not because of Huawei, yeah. exactly. Not because of Huawei, it's because of the US government. Project Prism. Go out and search <laughs> it and then tell me how what you feel. <laughs> yes. like, and, I forgot about the NSA. Oh yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> And then, oh, and then finally, what? Yeah. NSA people, NSA. Sure. Uh, and finally, we dropped our Ryzen 2700X 4K gaming build, and boy, AMD has another sweet winner again. Uh, this thing is is fantastic. I did the build. I really love the build. I don't love the price of the GTX 1080 Ti that's in that build because <laughs> <laughs> that's the one thing in the build that you know. But I was able to connect it to the Samsung 65-inch TV, ran all the games in 4K. Doom ran at 181 frames per second. Oh, God, that's beautiful. Um, so, and again, on that screen size as well. So it, it, it just, it kicks ass. I mean, uh, AMD has really done something where, and you've seen other people reviews, but go ahead and check out the build. So, you, you know, in case you want to do something similar, you might not, might not want to do that 1080 Ti because even I myself, man, I'm thinking of removing it. That's just a, a single, <laughs> a single 1080. Yeah, just a single 1080 Ti. I mean, like it ran games really well. well I played wait, Fortnite. Wait, don't, 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 don't just tease it. What did you spend on that 1080 Ti? Um, nine hundred and ninety-six. Oh wow, it's n that's not bad, dude. Actually, yeah, because that was a quick sale. That's not <laughs> bad because right that's now you go out and ten eighty Ti. It's like fifteen hundred is the worst I've seen for it right I now. And mind you, because I'm I was seeing a lot of prices around eleven twelve. Yeah, no, eleven twelve. Yeah, I built my PC right at the right time when I did. Because mine, the reason why is because I picked the one that didn't. Everybody offers RGB lighting, right? So I mean, this one has this lighting on the logo. I was like, that's enough for you guys. I can't. I can't afford. I paid I can't uh, afford flourish lighting for an extra three hundred bucks. I paid eight ninety nine for mine, but I have a ten eighty Ti VR blah blah five K. What the hell is the ROG edition ASUS one? Yeah, yeah. but it's yeah. like boost clock is seventeen hundred megahertz. Yeah, it's um, it's it's pricey up there, but it's definitely. I mean, a TI is definitely worth it if you're building something like this. The one thing I'll say, if you're thinking about a Ryzen processor, is that AMD uses the AM4 chipset, so this <laughs> chip will work with your Ryzen from last year motherboard. It will work with your lowest uh, common denominator motherboard. So if you bought a motherboard for ninety nine dollars, you can put this chip in it. Yeah, uh, and it won't have all the bells and whistles, but. I wasn't. I wasn't bucks, a part of the. Uh, I wasn't a part of this live stream, but Newegg did an almost two-hour conversation with uh, JJ from ASUS and an AMD product rep, where they go through in detail some of the differences, and that was really exciting. Chipset yeah. is still backwards compatible. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, the 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 socket is still um, compatible with newer uh, pieces. There are some benefits, obviously, if you go with the newer motherboard, but um, the whole the whole write up and the whole discussion on twenty seven hundred X is very compelling right now. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, so definitely go check that out. Uh, and, and coming forward, uh, what we have next week, uh, tomorrow, uh, we have two live streams. One is on Onboard. We'll be doing our final uh, wrap up of the Marvel MCU universe covering movies like um, uh, Captain America Civil War, Doctor Strange, just kind of a chronicle, logical lead up into Infinity War. So come and join us on Onboard to check that out. And then later on tomorrow night on Board at Work, Westworld discussions are back. Oh so uh, we, we'll be live streaming about 15 minutes after the show airs, um, but I'll have that up so you guys can see. So join us if you watch Westworld, the discussion should be fun because more mayhem is going to continue in that. And then next week, I think Monday, most likely, uh, we have our uh, photographer, professional photographer test of the Huawei P20 Pro. Got my friend, Marian, who's a professional photographer. Take a look at it. And uh, you'd be quite interested to see what he has to say about it. Uh, lots of photos, lots and lots of photos. Uh, we're only sad because I had to use the phone for something and he called me up, he was like, Oh man, I, I wish I had it for this professional photo shoot. I was like, why did you tell me earlier? <laughs> you know, it'd be great, but but like, you, know, you mean I could have showed up to the to the pro <laughs> professional photo shoot? Like, no, 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 no. With the phone. The, the phone. phone, the phone. <laughs> but yeah, so that and then we'll I think we will have our final review of the, the Samsung TV coming up uh, next week. 
So anyway, guys, thank you very much. Uh, this has been an interesting show. Um, covered a lot of topics, one very long one. Those of you listening on the podcast, we appreciate because we went into just a diatribe. Uh, <laughs> First 30 minutes, yeah. <laughs> but again, thank you. It's very all much. your fault, Sam. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? Forget you. Forget yous. Forget yous. <laughs> Um, and at this point, I want to say definitely check out all the channels. Mr. Warren Bowman at BW1.com. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. His YouTube channel is also BW1.com. And his website is BW1.com. And then Mr. Juan Carlos Bagnell, uh, some gadget guy. That is his internet name. Find him on Instagram. Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, it is all some gadget guy. He also uh, does a show on Newegg uh, Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, with his fellow co-host, Trisha Hirschberger. It's uh, Newegg Now Live, I believe that's the name of the show. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you can check him out there and uh, see all his awesome content. And finally, the man who is now fuzzy and out of focus, uh, Black Iron underscore man, Sam. Um, he is now putting encryption into his video file. He's so being deleted. <laughs> delete, <laughs> delete, delete, delete. I'm, be, yeah, yeah. I'm being deleted from existence right yeah. now. Little delete. Little. But, Let's but see yeah. if I can make this oh, work go. better. There yeah. we go. Yep. So you can follow him on um, on Twitter. It's Black Iron underscore man. And myself, it's Border Work, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. The website is also Border Work. Check out our content. Check out everyone's content. And um, yeah, Jonathan, hit me up on Twitter. Congratulations. And thank you, everyone. And always enjoy your entertainment. Boom.